Hi folks, Steve here and welcome to my new video where I'm going to paint a creepy candle spider. So let's crack on. So here's one of these little guys that I've already painted. Uh, I've got a second one that I'm going to show you how to paint today. Um, these candle spiders, they were uh, sculpted by a sculptor called Blightbones for the uh, skirmish game Necropolis 28 that was created by a, a guy called Peter who goes by the name of Owlshield on Instagram. Um, so I'll pop some links down in the description so you can check out their stuff because it's well worth having a look. Um, so this is the, the one I'll be painting today. I've just primed him in uh, plain black, matte black, uh, Vallejo um, primer, which is my favourite primer, but whatever you've got uh, will do the trick. And we're just going to get some uh, base colours on first. Um, so the two paints that I've got here are a very dark brown colour. This is German Camo Black Brown from Vallejo and the, the other colour on there is violet from Vallejo as well um, but any any colours that you've got that are, are similar in nature to this will do and the first thing I'm going to do is coat him all over with the with the dark brown I'm just going to get everything here um, although if, I, if you don't get into the, the very recesses so like the, the pits of the eye sockets and things like that then that's, that's absolutely fine because they can stay black that's one of the benefits of starting off with a black primer but other than that, I'm going to pretty much try and cover everything. And uh, I'll get out a slightly bigger brush in a moment and just hit the base with it as well, just for the um, like the little bit of car car back or whatever it is I've stuck him on, just to make sure we've got some colour all over there. So at this point, he's had a complete base coat in the black brown, and I'm just going over the top part again, just with the, with the same colour. Um, very thin down just so we've still got a bit of um, active paint there and then I'm going to move over to the violet here and um, again this is quite dilute as well it's, uh, it's not very thick and I'm going to apply this to his uh, legs and um, I'm just going to allow it to blend so up at the, the top we've still got some quite active um, black brown paint and so it's going to it's just going to sort of merge into it and give it a bit of a, a murky dark look and um, that's absolutely fine um, I'm going to go over all the legs and just be you know be careful about this make sure I've got every every part of it and I'll do two coats because this is um, it's quite thin so when it dries at first because the the um, coat underneath is quite dark then the purple is going to be quite dark um, we don't want it to become too bright but we, we do want it to, to be noticeable underneath um, and the reason I'm doing this, adding this this tone, is because the the model itself it's, it's quite small and it's mostly just one material. It's you know it's a skeleton from top to bottom, apart from the candle at top. Um, so I want to just incorporate an, another colour into the undertones just to give it um, just a, a bit more visual interest once we've once we've completed painting it. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to do this, and um, once this is dry, I'll go over it and give it a second coat with the with the violet again. Okay, so we've done the base colours, those are completely dry and I'm going to add another colour onto my palette now. This is uh, Leather Brown, um, very similar in colour to uh, GW's old Snakebite Leather. I'm not sure what the, the new variety is, but it's just a, a leather brown colour. And uh, we're going to use this pretty dilute, so we, we don't want it to be too thick at all. So we're going to start building some texture on the model. But this is going to be um, texture that we create by the marks that we leave. We don't want uh, build up of actual physical texture of the paint. And I'm going to start um, from the top of the model, so the bit where the, the most light is going to catch and work my way down. And I'm not going for um, specifically covering whole areas. Um, as you can see there, I'm being quite sort of scratchy with the way I'm doing it. I'm putting in some um, you know, like lines and dots and almost like random marks, but covering um, the areas where there's going to be more light and that I want to, to um, draw attention to. So I'll also be hitting sort of around the, high, the eye sockets and the, the nose and the teeth um, and all these little ridges and spikes and things like that. Um, so although it's only a small mini, uh, this is a relatively time consuming bit because there is lots of little details and we want to make sure that we do um, cover everything that we that we want to build this colour onto um, and what will happen is once I've done done it with this colour and I'm happy with the, the amount of area that I've covered I'll move on to a lighter colour and reduce slightly the, the area that I'm working on 
um, still using the same process of creating this um, texture as we, we go along, painting these little marks and dashes and everything to, to highlight all these sharp edges or to catch the areas of the like the smooth dome of the skull for example where the, the light is going to hit um, and so yeah I'm just going to move around the model um, and I'll probably go over it several times as well so like I said I'm using quite a thin paint um, so we want to just be able to build that colour up a, a little bit until we're happy with it and so you can see here on the skull that I'm, I'm covering a lot of the area but I'm not co covering it fully so it's as I said before these little marks and scratches you can still see quite a lot of the, the dark original base coat underneath and that's the idea here so we're going to get a lot of um, contrast over the bone area as we increase the, the highlights as we move up in value um, and you can see here I'm going to go for all the little um, these little spikes, the spines that are coming off the legs um, the legs themselves I'm not going to do very much to them um, we're going to let the, the purple colour sit there because we are going to do a couple of uh, washes over that as well which is going to you know, add some um, some more depth and, and some different tones to it. So I don't want to sort of build up the bone colour too much on on the legs themselves. The only part of that that I do want to touch is all these little spikes. But I am going to go around the mini and make sure that all these these little spikes do get some colour on them. And I'll do that at each stage of the the highlights as well. So starting with this colour and also going on with with each additional colour as well. And now we're moving on to the next stage where we're, we're really going to start putting the the real highlights on. Um, so the colour that I'm using here is um, it's called Light Mud from Panzer Aces. Um, now you could just easily use a bone colour, so something like um, a Shabti Bone. Um, not something too light like Screaming Skull, that would be a bit too light to, to begin with. But any kind of off sort of bone kind of colour. Um, or some kind of beige would do and what I've done first is I've um, mixed in some of the previous colour so some of that uh, leather brown into it as well so we're not going straight in with the lighter colour um, and this again is, is really really thin and so I'm going to start exactly the same as before by um, just working the areas where I want to uh, increase the, the highlights so we're looking at everything that's going to catch a bit of light and doing these little marks and scratches to try and give them uh, the impression of texture um, so that's that's really the aim here we're using the, the successively lighter colors to create both texture and highlight at the same time and um, just to to make the the bone look interesting and, and aged and worn so you can see all the, the little dashes so it almost comes across as um, sort of random that I'm sort of touching and dabbing here and there and in some respects it is you you kind of zone out or I find that I do sometimes when I'm when I'm painting like this I kind of get in that um, that little flow state uh, and just moving around the mini and putting these little marks wherever I, I feel that they'll you know they'll look good um, so we're not necessarily trying to get something that's hyper realistic either it's it's you know it's quite a stylized way of painting the model um, with him being such a a small little guy even though there's a lot of detail on we do want to try and um, create this high contrast so there's a lot of readability to the mini so you, you get this impression of him being a, a creepy little skeletal dude rather than this you know if we were to just paint it all one color and then start washing it to create the shadows we won't get very much contrast so it's not gonna it's not gonna stand out very much you you know differentiating the, the little different parts of the bone and things so this is a nice way of doing it with um, these kind of models and now moving on to the pure light mud so whatever whatever colour that you use if it's a you know bone colour or whatever that's the, the point at which we move on to, to this one and we're going to continue doing exactly the same as we did previously um, just a little bit more focused and trying to make um, smaller more definite marks you can see I've, I've changed to a, a slightly smaller paintbrush as well because I was originally using I think it was a size 1 brush um, not sure what size this one is it was just a, a smaller one that I picked up that was lying on my desk and um, but definitely trying to make um, a lot more smaller um, precise marks with this and so we'll start to see things you know like little scratches here and there and, and things like that uh, to really up that idea of the, the texture um, and again same process not much else to say about it we're just going to move around 
um, continue making these marks and uh, catching all the, the little areas that we want the light to, to hit. And you can see here what I mean about painting the legs. So I'm not really, I'm not going down uh, too far into the purple, uh, but I am just sort of picking out the, the uppermost parts and making sure that I'm getting the little spikes that they're, they're covered and they've got that, that highlight on them. And now we're at the, the wash stage, so this is going to help tie together the, the highlights that we've done, so give a bit of uniformity to it, and also add a, a few more interesting tones to it. And so you can see I'm making this wash from the paints that I have on the wet palette there. I'm using the uh, dark brown that we had originally, and I've also added a little bit of green into it. Um, this is uh, I think it's intermediate green from Vallejo, but the, the green is really not important. You can use whatever green you want, as long as it's not some kind of fluorescent sort of green just any any natural looking green will be fine um, and we're making this it's really really thin um, whenever you're washing um, in this way that we're doing anyway this is pretty much more like a, a glaze so there's um, a lot more water than than what I would normally add this is probably I don't know at least four or five parts water to to the paint um, it's always better to use a thinner wash than um, then you think you need sort of go thinner and if you have to do it a couple of times you know if you need to do three four coats of it to get the effect you want that's much preferable uh, in my opinion anyway than going on too thick and then ruining the work that you've already done so if you if you build it up gradually you can take it to the point where you're happy with whereas if you do it too thick then you're kind of stuck with it as you put it on um, so you can see here that I'm applying it um, I'm not being too specific it's going all over the model anyway um, so all over this, this bone area that we've already painted and all over the legs and it'll just help sort of tie everything together and make it look a bit more natural. When the wash is dry we go straight back in and start re-establishing the highlights using the, the same previous colour as before. As you probably gather by now it is quite a labour intensive process but I do think it is worth it to, to put that time and effort in especially on a little guy like this um, the, the end result is, is really worth it. Now we're going to really finesse those highlights um, so we're boosting it a little bit more so I've now added a colour called uh, Pale Sand into the uh, previous colour of the light mud and um, if you don't have those paints or if you're using a bone paint or whatever you could do this by just adding a, a little bit of white into that colour uh, anything that's just going to uh, really boost it up and so at this point I'm going to use that to pick out certain details. You can see I'm doing the eye sockets, um, the sort of the upper point of the bone of the nose, the, the teeth. And we're just going to add in some extra little marks around the, the top and on all the bits that kind of <laughs> that poke out really. So I'll go over all the little spikes on his legs as well and things like that. So we're really just accentuating the, the work we've already done just with some careful little marks that we're placing um, really really in a, a reduced area compared to where we've already done the, the rest of the work so we don't want to cover up any of the um, any of the gradient that we've made in the, the way the colours change. I'm also going to do a final wash on the mini as well but this really is going to be um, essentially a glaze at this point so there's, there's more green in than there was last time but uh, also a lot more water so it's uh, effectively just going to be a filter over the colours that we've already put on top. Okay we're going to move on to the candles now and so I'm starting by painting the, the body of the candles and for this I'm using a uh, yellow colour. This one is uh, Zandri Dust by Games Workshop but any um, yellow sort of ochre colour will do nicely for this and so again just working with this nice and thin sorry the camera shot's a bit blurry there but you can kind of see what I'm doing um, I'm just covering all the, the waxy areas on the, the, the candle itself and the bits that have dripped down onto the skull and I'm leaving the recesses um, the initial brown colour that we had so we've got the shadows there and we then highlight the candles using the same final highlight mix that we used for the, for the bone in general for the rest of the mini after that I start working on the flames and uh, I first base coat them entirely in the colour pale sand that I'd used earlier. Uh, if you were using white you can you can use white as well, it won't really make much difference at all. 
After that we then apply some very thin yellow and we're going to cover most of the flame on this uh, point just leaving the centre of the flames with the, the lighter colour that we started off with. The final stage for the flames is to add some orange in. So I started with a uh, mix of orange and the previous yellow um, and then used a, a little bit more orange in it. Um, at this point you might find that you'll need to go back and forth a little bit so you're happy with it. Um, if you want to try and get the, uh, the gradient of the colours as smooth as you can. So if you need to go back to the, to the yellow for example and then just smooth over the part where the, the yellow and the orange transition into each other then just go back and do that. Um, and then it's often worth just going back with your, your lightest colour, whether that's uh, white or the pale sand like I used, and just establishing the, the brighter parts at the base of the candle. Now I'm going to do the, the OSL from the glow of the candle, and to do that all we're going to do is first take the, um, the orange mix that we'd used, so the, the darkest of them, and just lay this on around the, the edges of the tips of the candle that will be close to the flame and also around the, the base of the, the wax that's melting onto the skull as well just to make it more interesting and, and give that vibrance. So it's not necessarily going to be strictly realistic but it's going to have a nice sort of glow to it that will separate it from the, the rest of the miniature. And then we finish off the OSL glow by using the yellow portion of um, what the same colour as we were using for the candle to highlight the, the orange glow that we've put on the tips of the candle and on the surrounding wax. Again, just being selective and, and doing a, a smaller area. And there we have the majority of the work done. Um, you can go back and forwards and, and kind of correct it and finesse it as you want, but that is the basics of it. And once you know how to do that, you can, you can take it as far as you want. All we need to do now is finish off the base. To complete the base I first applied an oil wash and this was a mix of burnt umber with a, a small amount of blacking and I just got that all over the base into to all the nooks and crannies, the crevices um, and then let that begin to dry. Um, I helped it along with a hair dryer as well just so the, the upper and raised parts were not completely wet when I moved on to the next stage. And that next stage is a bit of dry brushing. Um, contrary to popular belief you can use acrylic paints over oil washes before they're fully dried um, but what you have to be aware of is that they will um, sort of blend and smudge together. Now for a base this is ideal, I actually like the effect that this creates so here I am using um, a Vallejo model colour Dark Flesh which is um, it's actually quite a light flesh tone, it's a, a strange name for it but I'm, I'm using some of that and I've also mixed in a little bit of the light mud that I used for the highlights on the skeleton um, and I'm just going over doing some careful dry brushing. Um, the more you, the more pressure you apply when you're using um, a dry brush technique over a wet oil the more of a sort of muddy mix you're going to get so best thing to do is to kind of experiment and um, sort of get a feel for it but I do quite like the the overall effect that it gives it gives quite a natural sort of muddy look to it and you tend to avoid the chalkiness that you might get um, using a, a dry brush technique over dried paints and finally I'm going to add some pigments to the base uh, I do like these as a nice quick way of finishing a, a base off and getting a natural look this is a mix I made myself from some artist chalks just ground up and mixed together to, to get the colour that I want and I find that applying this whilst the, the oil wash is still quite wet in the, the recess actually helps bind it to the mini so the, the oil wash serves a, an extra purpose there as well which is quite useful and once we've got that done I'm just going to give the um, base of the, or the rim sorry, of the, of the base uh, nice coat of black paint just to finish that off. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found something useful from it. If you did then uh, please give me a comment and let me know. Um, also consider liking the video if you liked it and subscribing to my channel if you'd like to see more like this as it really does help me out. Uh, thanks very much and um, bye for now.